Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Well, it is Friday, January 6th. It, it is the Friday before the start of your 2023 legislative session, and the pre-filing of bills continue to come in. And yes, we have been waiting for this, and it is finally here. We have a bill that we need to talk about, get you up to speed. We all knew this was coming. This is going to be the big one this year. So today, Let's spend a few minutes and talk about Washington State proposes an assault weapon ban for 2023. Okay, so what we are talking about today is a brand new piece of legislation to be dropped today. It's actually two pieces of legislation. It is Senate Bill 5193 with a House bill, a companion bill of 1180. So this is Senate Bill 5193, House Bill 1180. What is it? It is the assault weapon ban of 2023. I know some of you are crapping yourselves right now, not only because we're talking about this, because I use the dreaded term assault weapon. Hey, that is not my terminology. That is the terminology that is used in the statute. So before any of you start banging away on your keyboard right now and cursing at me for using the language, I am merely using the language in the statute. Now, we recently did a video where we went back and we took a look at Senate Bill 5217. That was last year's sixth run at an assault weapon ban here in Washington State and said, you know, they don't have a lot of creativity and they're probably not going to do much, much different this time around. Well, guess what? Uh, turns out we were right on that one because 5193, Senate Bill 5193 and House Bill 1180 are not only carbon copies of each other, but it is a almost cut and pasted directly out of 5127. How would this bill work if enacted into legislation. And let's make that known right now that that is a huge if. If this bill is enacted into legislation as it's written right now, what does it mean to you, the lawful and responsible gun owner? Well, first of all, if you just want to know the disingenuous nature of people like Kathy Kerterer and Senator Valdez who sponsored this legislation, take a listen to just their legislative findings to start this out. The legislature finds and declares that gun violence is a threat to the public health and safety of Washingtonians. Assault weapons are civilian versions of weapons created for military and are designed to kill humans quickly and efficiently. For this reason, the legislature finds that assault weapons are like M16 rifles and thus are weapons most useful in military service. You, you literally cannot make this stuff up. If, if I could not cut and paste this from the bill, I know that many of you would believe that I am just making this crap up. This is what else some of their findings are. Moreover, the legislature finds that assault weapons are not suitable for self-defense, and that studies show that assault weapons are statistically not used in self-defense. The legislature finds that assault weapons are not commonly used in self-defense and that any proliferation is not the result of assault weapons being well-suited for self-defense, hunting, or sporting purposes. Rather, increased sales are the result of the gun industry's concerted efforts to sell more guns to a civilian market. Now, if you haven't gotten out your barf bag yet, consider these legislative findings. The legislature finds that the gun industry has specifically marketed these weapons as tactical, hyper-masculine, and military style in a manner that overtly appeals to troubled young men intent on becoming the next mass shooter. The legislature intends to limit the prospective sale of assault weapons while allowing existing legal owners to retain the assault weapons they currently own. So that is the mindset by which this legislation has come from. And I'm, I'm sorry to chuckle uh, as I say that, but I'm having a hard time keeping a straight face as I'm beginning to read through some of this uh, for only a couple of times now. Now, how does this legislation work? It works just like 5217 does. It creates a new definition. It's called assault weapon. And then it takes a whole category of firearms based upon names, models, and other components and other things attached there too, and groups them all into this horrible level of being an assault weapon. Once you become an assault weapon in Washington State, 
that weapon, once it becomes categorized as an unlawful assault weapon, cannot be sold, offered for sale, manufactured, distributed, or otherwise. The possession of the firearm is grandfathered in, but quite different than we did with the magazines. And so we're going to have to pay attention to that when I get to that in a moment. Now, the types of firearms that it's going to ban. Well, it's going to ban AR-15s in all formats, M4s, M16s in all formats, AK-47, AK-74s in all formats. Then there is a laundry list of firearms. You have seen this list before because these are all the firearms that were listed in Senate Bill 5217 and all the other versions that preceded it, listing a multitude of firearms that would now be deemed unlawful assault weapons. In addition to that, however, there is several components that if your firearm has any of these components, and I can assure you, if you have anything in the ARAK platform, you're going to have these components on your firearm, and they are going to be deemed to be unlawful assault weapons as well. It includes things such as a semi-automatic center file rifle that has the capacity to accept detachable magazines and has any one of more of the following. A, a grip that is independent or detached from the stock that protrudes conspicuously beneath the action of the weapon. B, thumb hole stock. C, folding or telescoping stock. D, forward pistol, vertical, angled, or other foregrip designed for use by the non-firing hand to improve control. E, flash suppressors silencers or anything to reduce the visual or audio signature of a firearm f muzzle brakes recoil compensators g threaded barrels designed to attach a flash suppressor i a shroud that encircles either all or part of the barrel such that the de design so that the shooter's hand doesn't get burned when firing the weapon and it goes on and on from there. It also talks about center fire semi-automatic pistols with attached stabilizing braces. So basically everything in your AR pistol platform, AK pistol platform, is also going to be deemed an unlawful assault weapon. It also lists some semi-automatic shotguns, more of the tactical models with the extra pistol grip and things such as that. But yes, this statue would also outlaw certain types of semi-automatic shotguns okay now here's how if this bill became law here's how the law would read and be enforced okay the assault weapon ban in washington state would look like this if this bill were passed in this form no person in the state may manufacture import distribute sell or offer for sale any assault weapon except as authorized in this section and so you can see that the word possess is not in there. And so that is the grandfathering provision as this is written, because there is no section here that addresses that as far as the firearms that we own at the time that this law goes into effect, if in fact it does go into effect. What then happens to all of those firearms when we die? That actually is addressed in this. And let me explain how this works by reading you what they say first. The receipt of an assault weapon by a person who, on or after the effective date of this section, acquires possession of the assault weapon by operation of law upon the death of the former owner who was in legal possession of the assault weapon, provided the person in possession of the assault weapon can establish such provenance. Receipt under this section 2D is not distribution under this chapter. So if you're looking for something in the bill that actually spells out a true grandfather provision, no, it's not there. Now, what the proponents of the legislation are going to say is we didn't ever outlaw the possession of it, so that would grandfather everybody in. As we know, these bills have a tendency to change and shift. There are amendments. Um, but this is the original form of this bill. And let me give you the numbers again so you can follow it. We'll put the links down below so you can check out all the pre-filed bills. You can check out the language for yourself. It's Senate Bill 5193, Senate Bill 5193 with a companion House Bill 1180, 1180, 5193 and 1180. That is your assault weapon ban of 2023 in Washington State. I'm sure this is the first in a series of videos that we'll end up doing 
about this terrible piece of legislation. In the meantime, if you have any questions about what's coming in Olympia or what's left of your Second Amendment rights, you know the drill. You can always contact us at WashingtonGunLaw.com or you can call us directly at 425-765-0487. Now let's remember, part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here at Washington Gun Law, is to know what the law is in every situation, how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe.